I have here a video store application. There are two types of videos, free and pro. The pro videos will be available only for users who will pay a small amount of monthly fee. So if a user pays, let's say, $10 on the, on the 1st of April, then he or she will be able to access all pro videos until the 1st of March. In this and next couple of lessons, we will dig into the problem of subscription-based payments or recurring payments. But before we start coding, let's have some theory. What actually means, from technical point of view, to add a payment system. It is kind of obvious that we'll need to integrate with some sort of third-party modules like Stripe or PayPal. But this answer is vague and incomplete. The thing is that before even starting to think about payment gateways, we need to figure out inside our application how to distinguish between the fact that user has paid or he hasn't. Let's make sure we grasp this idea because it is crucial to understand it. Let's go back to video store example. At any given moment in time, in video store application, we will use code like this to distinguish between users who paid and those who didn't. So the heart of whole payment feature is this function, which returns either true or false. And the most important part is that this function call does not use or invoke any payment gateway API. In fact, definition of has paid for current month method is pretty simple, and paid until attribute is an instance of Django's date field. So basically, the subscription feature in video store application part is nothing more than adding one field and one function on user model. The decision making point, so to speak, is paid until attribute. So the very first step on implementing subscription feature is to implement and test this part. And only after we are sure that this part works as expected, we should proceed with payment gateways like PayPal, Stripe, or whatever payment gateway you decide to use. Now let's include in the picture payment gateways. Here is a general overview of the process. User has a checkout screen where he or she will decide on the product. This view is rendered in our Django application. Once the user decides on the product, he will be transferred to the checkout view. It is important to understand that both of these steps, step 1 and step 2, happen on Django side application. Depending how you design your application, these steps may be combined into one single step. It is up to you how you design UI. Stripe, for example, helps you a little bit, in the sense that they provide you with JavaScript libraries to render their checkout and to do some basic validation on the client side. Once the user decides on the product and on the payment method, the whole payment process is transferred to the external application. Payment Gateway. What happens on this side is not our concern. From video store application point of view, what happens here is pure magic. It is important to understand that when external payment completes with success or failure, it will notify our application. N a notification is nothing more than a usual HTTP POST request on a specific URL. And video store application must catch, so to speak, this POST and process it correctly. And if payment succeeded, video store application will need to update paid until model field. For the rest of this screencast, we will implement the code which will handle paid until attribute. In the next screencast, we will apply the theory we just learned in the context of Stripe Payments Gateway. And in the last part of this mini course, we will add PayPal into the picture. The PayPal part will be a pro video, and it will be available on DjangoLessons.com. DjangoLessons.com Pro videos will be available for free until June 2020. You will need only to sign up to access them. So I have here a user model where I already added paid until attribute. Notice that paid until is a date instance and blank values are allowed or empty values are allowed. Now what I want to do, I want to create the decision maker function, so to say. This one has paid for current month. In code, I will stick with a shorter name, with this one, has paid. Now the value of current date will be something like date time, date today. So I need to import date time. Next, I want to add some very basic tests for this function. 
but testing this function the way it is now will be kind of difficult because this value current date depends on well current date and to make it easier to test I'll make current date as an argument something like this and now let's add some basic unit tests for this function so here's a skeleton for the basic unit test for has paid function first thing I will do in this unit test I will create one user instance I need only a valid user instance and user instance is valid even if it doesn't have password so I will skip setting the password step now let me save the user instance and because user was just created I would expect its has paid method to return false let's check that you see the test fails because current date is compared with an empty attribute none so we need to take care of that first something like this and let's run test again okay great let's add one more unit test and for this unit test we'll play with date values instead of repeating myself and creating user instance at the beginning of each and every test I'll move this code into a setup function this function is called before each unit test so let me first instantiate a date let it be 1st of April 2020 and now I want to set paid until attribute with current date plus uh, 30 days in the future let me import both date and time delta yeah and here must be current date okay great now you see how handy it is to pass the current date as an argument because this way test does not depend on the date when we run it because current date is always fixed to 1st of April 2020 let me now run it to double check that there's no errors okay great and let me add one more test similar to this one but this time paid until will be 30 days in the past so I would expect the has paid will be false great but this code is not entirely correct because after I change paid until attribute on the user instance I need to save user instance so correct will be like this instead of repeating myself and writing the same set paid until save every time I'll move this code inside another function so now I can change this part with something like this so this way we write less code the most critical part of all payment process is this one during this step payment gateway sends you a notification with what happened here now in case user has paid for the product but Django application encounters an error here and does not set paid until correctly then we will end up in a very unpleasant situation where customer pays but does not get access to pro videos in order to avoid this sort of very unpleasant situations we need to make sure that set paid until function works as expected in any kind of situation and one of such situation might be that paid until attribute received as argument in this function might not necessarily be a date instance it might be for example a timestamp or it might be a date represented as string so we need to at least take care of these two situations so what I'll do I will rename this argument to date or timestamp and then before setting this value I'll do a couple of checks so if this argument is an integer I will assume it is a timestamp so I will need to extract date from a timestamp in case input parameter is a string I would I would assume that again it is a timestamp so let me now import date and here's a space so I created one more test where I instantiate a timestamp in future 
and then I pass this timestamp as an argument to set paid until and I pass it one time as integer and another time as a string and if I run tests now yeah they fail and this test fails because here date from timestamp should have an argument as integer Okay, it worked. But the thing is, it is difficult to write this function correctly without knowing in advance API of payment gateway. So I will leave this code the way it is for now. In the next lesson, I will introduce Stripe payment gateway. In that lesson, we'll have yet another look at this function. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thanks for watching.